We've got to take that, compartmentalize that objection, break it down, and that way we can reallocate the decision back to that person. Okay? So if I'm trying to get you to make a decision, let's say Michelle says, I need, I need to talk to my husband, right? Or my dog, or my friend, or this. And I say, oh, great, perfect. So do you want to just go ahead and get signed up? And I completely ignore it. That deal's going nowhere. I just, I just tried to, you know, push a parked car. That was just a complete waste of everyone's oxygen. So we've got to defer to that authority that whatever it is that they're blaming to, to help them rationalize why they're not able to move forward today. Because a lot of them actually do want to move forward, but they just have this hesitation or lack of knowledge on whatever it is that they're hearing from you. And we just have to reassure them oftentimes. So, obviously I know you guys have kind of studied a lot of the objection cards and stuff. Um, and I think what we can do is we can just start by running through a few of the big objections that you'll hear a lot of the times. Um, so I'll start with Michelle, since Michelle is actively in the trenches on the phones with me. And then we'll just round robin. Tim, you're free to jump in too if you'd like, buddy. Alrighty. So Michelle, um, I, uh, I already have insurance. This out, were you looking for a rate reduction or looking to add more coverage? Um, I was just, uh, just looking for a price. Just for a price? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I can definitely provide that to you. We just need to determine what you can get qualified for. And then I, do you want me to keep going? No, you're good. I just wanted to see how, how you'd handle that if you would, if you'd fall under the pressure. Well done though. Um, so, uh, Corey. I need to talk to my wife. Oh yeah, I totally understand, Juliana. Just curious, um, what do you want to talk to her about? Um, just kind of like how the plan works. I'm not sure. I think it's like this is this is like a permanent plan, right? Right. So um, before you go and talk to your wife, uh, I want to make sure that you understand everything about the plan, so you can explain it to her, uh, you know, to the fullest. So, um, what do you not understand about the plan exactly? Um, I just don't understand. Like, so the price never goes up or, or anything. Yeah. So um, the price is never going to go up. The coverage is never going to go up or down as long as you pay the small number, like I told you. They're going to pay the big number. So um, if you're comfortable with the small number, you can pay it every month, then you're going to get that big number no matter what. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And then... Awesome. So, uh... Okay. I want to see if you're going to do it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, you kind of cut out at the end there. Did you, did you want me to keep going? Yeah, no worries. I was just going to say I, I would immediately go back again for the close. Right, so, oh, okay, so, yeah, I think there's a delay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I keep talking over you, my bad. No, you're good, brother. I thought there was a delay there because it keeps, like, cutting in and out. There's, like, a little loud dingy noise. But, okay, yeah, great. So, yeah, exactly. Ask for the close. As soon as you've got that objection uh, answered, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the close again, right? And a lot of times to be careful of this when we answer the objection a lot of times the, the salesperson sits there in victory like oh I, I got my objection overcame and then they forget to ask for the order and you have to be careful because if you don't they're just going to give you the same objection or another objection because they have no direction in the conversation so they like it's awkward they don't really know what to say and so their their thought process is like um to fill the, the to fill the empty void of, of silence Okay, so immediately after that deal again, oh, hey, I totally understand that you talk to your wife about it. Um, what is it about the plan that you think your wife wouldn't like? Oh, I just, I mean, the price is a little bit high. Well, if we could get that price closer to 50 or $60 a month for her, do you think that'd be more comfortable? Yeah, I think so. Great, well, why don't we, why don't we do that? We can get you 10000 for $60 a month. And we can just go ahead and get that set up for you guys, and then I can go, you know, call her and go over this with, with you and her together once you've already gotten an approval. Sound fair enough? Bam, right? Yeah. 
ask for that deal again. And it doesn't have, you don't have to say the exact same clothes every time. Like I just, I just said sound fair enough. Like you don't have to say, let's just get you signed up. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can have some variation yeah. there to keep it more conversational, but great objection overcome. I would try studying the word track a little bit more to so you don't come off confrontational. There was a few times there when you, the way that you said it, you were like, uh, I forget exactly how you said it. Tim might, I know Tim's listening. He might be able to provide some context, but, um, you, you, the way that you said it, there was a little bit of like, it was almost, you, you were like, oh. what, what do you need to talk to your wife about? Yeah, it was, it was what we need to say, but it was like the way we said it was a little confrontational. Like, okay, what do you need to talk to your wife Tone. about? Tone is a little off. A little bit. And then like, for example, then just after that, you're like, well, like I told you earlier, which kind of makes me feel like stupid. And so when you're like, hey, what do you need to talk to your wife about? I'm like, pressure. Then you're like, hey, so like I told you earlier, the way that it works, I'm like, uh, I'm starting to feel like almost yeah. a little, a little uncomfortable. I'm not, I'm probably not like completely thrown off the deal, but we're trying to go from good to great. And that's going to be one of those differentiators, which is that tonality there and that positioning where you're going from being, um, sales representative offering a plan to we're almost like a customer service rep solving their solution type of deal. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, dude. Good stuff. Keep it up. Arthur. Um, I like the plan a lot, but I need to think about it. Okay, Leanne, that makes perfect sense to me. I guess, what is your time frame on actually getting back to me? Would it be in the next day or two just to see if I'd be able to, I just want to make sure that I am available. Uh, I, yeah, I could get back to you here in about probably I can get back to you tomorrow. That'd be fine. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if I can actually be randomly available like that with my schedule. Right. What can I do to pull up my calendar? I'm sorry. What I can actually do is just pull up my calendar and so you can actually book a specific time with me. Mm -hmm. That way, you don't have to just chase me down and vice versa. We're not playing phone tag. Are you more of a morning person or an evening person? If you could call me in the evening at about 5.45, that's the perfect time to catch me. Okay. And before I jump off, I will call you back at 5.45. Just so I know what to go over on our call together, what is it that you were curious about? Was it the price of the program or basically how the program works? Um, well, I mean, it's, I, I guess I'm not really, I'm on a fixed income and I like the 25,000 in coverage. I think it's a great plan, but I'm just worried that what if like next Christmas or if I have a bill or something come up, that's not expected. I don't know if I'll be able to pay that 185 a month that's coming with this plan and that's kind of what I'm, that's kind of what I'm like going to look over and everything is just really my budget to see if that's even feasible. And, and that makes perfect sense to me. Um, like does happen and you just want to make sure that you be able to maintain the protection in case like does happen. I guess I'm just wondering because everyone else in your area has been looking to lock down something at this time. If we can make a change today, um, so that you can be comfortable, and we can at least have something in coverage for you. If it's not $25,000 coverage, it could be 20. And if we can take that 185 down to say 150, would that make you feel a little bit more comfortable? And then once your income stabilizes, you can always give me a call back and we can make the adjustments then. Um. Yeah, yeah, we could do something like that. How much is uh, 20000 Okay. Then the question is, how much would you be comfortable for so that you won't have to worry each month? Um, 
I could do like, instead of the 186 a month, I could do like 125. That would be like no brainer. I could totally do that. Okay, just give me a moment and then I'm able to find you something at 125. Would you have any other questions for me? So I'm gonna make sure that you're comfortable. Um, no, actually that's, that would, that would be all. Okay, at 125, it's coming back at just under 20,000 and 19,000. Mm -hmm. So we can go ahead and get that set up today. And again, in the future, I'm your go-to person. Any changes you need to make, I, we can touch back bases and I can make those arrangements for you. How does that sound? That's, that's perfect. And uh, very well done, Arthur, by the way. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> whatever you, I saw that you were reading the word track off and you skipped over that, I'm gonna actually change that because I think that's something most people are not gonna be comfortable saying. Um, I'm guessing that's, I'm guessing that's probably, that's not you, and I'm guessing that's probably why you didn't deliver it that way, is that right? Well, at the one part, it didn't make sense to what your scenario was going as. Right. So I just added it because it just didn't make sense. Okay, perfect. The way the conversation flow was going on. Okay, I'm gonna make a note of that here because I wanna make sure that this is like gonna be able to, I want this to be as versatile as possible. Really well handled. Um, and the fact that like, I don't know, I don't, I think we, I don't think we got there yet, but just like we talked about with Corey, immediately hammering that, that order ask out again. Okay, perfect. Let me see what I can get for you. And then while I'm doing that, um, if you were to get a proof of this plan, Arthur, would you want this to start today? Or, or I guess, how did you want to do that? And then we're, we're getting them back on the, hey, let's get, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's get it Because then there's, when there's a delay there, the fact that you asked me for if I had any other questions was like, that was expert level objection overcome. Because had I had any other, um, you know, any other you know, random little things. Hey, my, my cat food just went up $3 a pound that, that you were right there on that. So well done. Um, and as soon as you cleared that concern up, just right back on, Hey, when are we getting this started? So that as soon as you find that right price, you're in the app, you already confirmed info, you know, we're already knocking it down and there we're jumping straight into health questions and, and making the app fast and seamless. Um, I'm getting a ton of feedback from clients, like real live clients that are telling me, Hey, you are such a professional. I've had to sit on the phone for three hours, four hours before with people to get insurance. You're getting this done in 30, 45 minutes. This has been the best experience I've ever had. And this is granted. I am asking them for a review and I'm sending them the link to our Google page to get the review. And then they start telling me about their experience with us. Um, and you know, sometimes I'll be on, hey, you know, that signature thing was tough. I really could not figure it out, but you were great. I liked you a lot. And so it helps us to kind of navigate like what carriers we're gonna go with, what we're gonna do, but the, the presentation, we wanna give them the speed, efficiency, and the right plan. And um, that's my only, my only feedback there was just jump right back into the order. But other than that, really well done. Um, let's see, we got about 11 minutes here left on the objections today. Um, what's one that you've been struggling with, Michelle, on the phones, actively? Um, sometimes, like, I have to talk to my wife or I have to talk to my husband. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Okay. Uh, well, I think I, had, I, I felt a little bit more comfortable overcoming that. I think the more that I'm doing it, the better, I, the more comfortable I'm feeling on, on overcoming it. Um, and then I would have to say, just like when they give me objections of like, you know, well, I had coverage, like that whole, you know, onion layer thing is peeling back those layers. I need to really, it's not necessarily like an objection. It's just like the, the discovery part is where okay. I need to dive deeper for sure. Okay. The way that I've always thought about discovery, because discovery is one of the biggest, like base assets you're going to have. And I, I think this is how I explained to Tim like three years ago when we were first in the car together. So Tim, tell me if I, if I nail this on the head, like I did back then. Um, but basically the way that you're looking at it is every, everything that 
you're built grabbing up until the close is ammunition. You're loading your gun up. Hey, I used to have coverage. Hey, I, I, uh, I had that with Mutual of Omaha, but I got it through the mail. That's to your weight, right? Used to have coverage, probably lot. Did you let it go? Yeah, I let it go. The price was too high, it was 300 a month. Can't afford 300 a month. And every little thing, I keep loading my gun, I'm loading my gun, I'm loading my gun, I'm loading my gun. And once I get to the end of that call, the more information I have, the more likely I am to, to go ahead and execute that deal, right? Because I've got so much ammo, the objection itself, like overcoming the objection is not just about saying the word track. Hey, Michelle, what do you need? What, you know, what is it that you think your wife wouldn't like about this plan, right? That's great. But if, if we know, hey, my wife doesn't like it when I make decisions without her, before I even pitch pricing or, ask, or, or go over anything at all, I already stop it right there. Hey, let's get your wife on the phone at another time. Or if she's available now, we can do that, which works better for you guys, right? And so when we're in the information gathering mode, we're loading the gun, loading the gun, loading the gun. And it's really easy to gun down objections. I mean, one after the other, bam, 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 bam. It's like clockwork when you have the information. But that's why we use those open-ended questions. Why, what, how, who, where, when, what, 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 tell me more about that. Like, how does that work? What does that look like? Right? Anything at all to just explore and get, and get anything like you can perfect word track and tonality and all of these things after, but just understanding the prospect is the deepest level of sales. And it goes, it all just goes back directly to listening. Two ears, mm -hmm. one mouth. They need to be talking more than you every single call. I'm more or less a mirror for who my prospect wants to talk to. Julian on the phone is not the Julian that, that you guys know and, and talk to on a daily basis. I'm just a mirror. So if they call, if they, if I call them and they're like, hello, I'm like, Hey, uh, is John there? Yeah, this is John. John, it's just Julian. I got your request here. How's it going, bud? A little more, I'm speaking their language, right? I get a lady who hops on. It's just the best day of her life. She just, you know, she's just happy as can be. Hey, baby, how's it going? Right? Oh, hey, Miss Jones. How's it going? Right? And I'll just like, I'll give her, I'm going to give them the energy that they're giving me back. And so I'm, I'm mirroring them as a person, but I'm also going to, um, I'm also going to mirror, mirror whatever it is that they're telling me. Yeah. Like I had a lady yesterday that I, I signed up. I lost my, I lost my son. I had to pay for his funeral. He didn't have insurance. I paid for that. We had to wash cars. I'm like, oh my gosh, you had to wash cars. Yeah. Wow. So you guys didn't have any insurance or, I mean, how did you guys even come up with that money washing cars? We washed so many cars. Da -da 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 -da. We had to do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I, I guess is like, is that what got you started looking for insurance again? Or like, what does that look like? Yeah. I need the insurance because blank. That because is what she is. She's selling me on the insurance now. I don't have to sell her on why blank company is better than blank company. I just have to, I just have to get her to tell me why she needs it. And so when these objections come back and they come in and this information comes up, like we just have to mirror it back to them. Why, what, what does it look like? How does it, oh my gosh, how did that affect you? How did that, Arthur has a good one. How did that make you feel? Um, I usually don't use that one. It's just not as much my style, but it's a great way to, hey, and how did that make you feel? If you can genuinely deliver that, I try to be as genuine as possible. If you can genuinely deliver that, giving that constant, like, just mirror the person, give, give them what they want to hear. And those questions are going to prompt long responses that are going to sell the plan itself. And that's where you're going to get that, those bullets. Hey, so we, I had a plan, like she told me, so I had to pay for my son's funeral with a car wash and then car wash doesn't want daughter to have car wash. Yeah. And then I had a plan and it lapsed because I had to pay for my son's funeral last paid for son's funeral out of pocket. And I'm just every single time. So then if she comes back and says, Hey, I need to think about this. I totally understand Michelle. That makes a lot of sense. But when we talked about this earlier, you mentioned that you didn't want Tiana to have to pay for, um, the funeral out of pocket, like you did with your son. If we're going to avoid that, we have to get you an approval. There's no way around it. So I guess, you know, what questions did you have for me? Right? Because instead of just going through a, like just only going through the word track, which is all I have at that time, 
Now I have like all of this energy and, and ammo that I can send straight to, back to the prospect. And instead of using Julian's words, you're using their words, which is crazy powerful because now they're like, oh my God, you're right. I don't want to do that again. Let's, let's get it done. And then they're closing you, <laughs> right? So that's, that's my suggestion there. Focus on listening, expand on the, on the information they're giving you. More information you have, the more likely you are to close. The less information you have, the, the less likely you are to close. So whoever's talking more is losing, right? If you can remember that, then this is something that like, keep, I have to keep a mental tally because I am a talker. I, if you guys can't tell, <laughs> uh, I think we all are, but like, you'll notice when you're in the call, if you find yourself talking more, just like, just think to yourself, why? What does that look like? How did that make you feel? Uh, you know, anything at all, like, and then just whatever they give you the next, yeah, I just wanted to look at that barrier. Oh, okay, I guess like, you know, tell me more about that. What's your experience with dealing with, you know, burials, right? Not the best one to come out with at the time, but if, you, if you've already come up and you've like been really like dodging those questions leading up to it, you gotta, you gotta play recovery faster. You could lose your deal before you start presenting pricing. And that could be that one, th oh, well, my, I had to bury my, my sister actually th uh, three years ago. It was so hard on us. That's, that's actually kind of why I started looking again. I just wasn't ready to talk about it for a long time. And it was super expensive. We ended up paying over, you know, 20 grand for it at a place down the road and because we wanted to get her buried next to mom. Oh, wow. Okay. So is it important for you to be buried next to family or is that just something that your, you and your sister had in, in store for her? What does that look like? Oh yeah, I have to get there. So I'm going to need at least 25 grand. Bam. Right. You see how powerful that is? These are real conversations that I'm pulling from. I'm not just like making this stuff up. So as soon as Michelle reconnects, I'm, I guess she probably got a call. Uh, we can role play it out. But Corey, I want to role play this out with you. Um, so discovery, let's just practice a little bit of that because this is going to give you the ammo to take objections down. So let's just say you call me up. Okay, ring, ring. Hello? Hey, who's on? Who's this? Hey, uh, this is Corey. Um, I just got this request. Request you sitting in here about the life insurance. Um, how's it going today? It's going good. You? I'm doing all right, man. I appreciate you asking. So, uh, was this your first time looking into anything like uh, life insurance? No, I've looked into it before. Just kind of wanted to see what the prices were. Okay, so you're just looking for prices. Um, so, what was the reason or what got you thinking that you might need something like this? Um. Well... I mean, just uh, everybody's gonna die, man. Hey, that's true. They say death and taxes, right? Um, so, um, <laughs> when you're looking for something like this, are you just looking to, uh, you know, cover um, end of life funeral expenses, or are you looking to leave some money behind for someone, or a little bit of both, maybe? Um, maybe a little bit of both. I just don't want to stick my wife with the bill. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I totally understand that. I totally understand. So, um, do you know exactly how much you were looking at? Are you planning to, do you know if you're planning to be buried or cremation? Have you thought about, uh, kind of how you want the funeral to be at all? Um, side note, be careful with asking people how much they were looking for. People will throw out crazy numbers like a million dollars. So just heads up that can become a problem. So just make sure you're sticking on track with burial or cremation. And then, hey, did, and is, did you wanna leave anything else behind? You have to control the scope of the amount of coverage you're looking for. Because if you open the can of worms and you start trying to meet their need or demand of 200,000 or a million dollars in coverage, you're not gonna meet it if yeah. you've got a ton of problems. Okay? Um, okay. Okay, yeah, no, I'm just, uh, you know, I don't know. I was just looking to just basically cover the funeral and if there's anything left, that would be cool. Okay, cool, man. So, um, is there anything else that you were looking to cover? I know you um, mentioned you want to leave some money back for your wife, um, but you didn't mention um, if you wanted to be buried or cremated. Um, have you thought about that? Let's do the burial. All right, so um, I'm looking here at Julian in Texas. Uh, the typical burial, you know, the average cost of that in a few 
you know, is anywhere between eight to 12,000. Um, so if we can look at something around that range for you, how does that sound? Um, okay. Okay, cool. So, um, so we're going to make sure we get this taken care of for you. So just so you know, kind of what I do, um, I'm a broker, not an agent. So that means that I look at all the big companies for you, like Mutual of Omaha, um, Aetna, American General, any of those. And, uh, we're going to try to find you the most coverage, uh, for the lowest amount of price, um, that you can qualify for. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you some quick health questions real quick to see which company can make the most sense for you, um, and then we can move forward. Sounds good. So, Corey, you see, you see how, like, I'm really trying to shut you out? You'll get this yeah. a lot for men, and I kind of gave you, like, a, a, maybe a little bit of a Texas or, Cal like, a, you know, California voice right there, a little, little backcountry Texas yeah. guy, a little backcountry California guy. Those two people specifically are a lot of the people that we talk to because they have huge populations. And a lot of the times they'll just, hey, I just want a price. Michelle's seen this a lot too. Arthur, I'm sure you've seen this. Um, you'll just get, hey, I just, I just want a price. I just want a price. I just want a price. And so we've got to find out, like, well, what, like, we don't want to say this word for word, like, why do you want a price? But that's what we have to get answered. Yeah. I was. I know you said you said about the wife, so I wanted in my head to like cry at that more, but I couldn't find the right thing to say. I don't think. I here's I was my trying to look at this. Here's my philosophy. It's better to sound stupid than to sound silent. Does that make sense? Yeah. So while most people disagree with that, it's always worked out for me. You can because you can like you might come out and say, well, okay, well, unless I'm just going to try and say this in a really dumb way, like. Well, why do you want to get insurance for your wife, right? Or why, why do you not want to stick your wife with the bill? That might be the why, that might blow the whole thing up. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, my brother and his his wife, and you know what I'm saying. You never know. Like, if yeah. people are going to care more about how you make them feel than how you than what exactly you say. So if you're not ready to just come and throw out the and I'm going to make a little set of like discovery questions for you guys, like um, just extra things to expand upon. That way, we have a framework for it. Um, but I've got, I've got to like dive into that and your instinct there was right, but the execution was not correct on, on diving into the, Hey, like, why do you want to do that? Because, um, you were not comfortable with the word track, but I'd rather you just go out and say something stupid if you don't know the word track, right? Yeah. Hey, well, why do you want to leave? I mean, why do you want to make sure your wife doesn't get smacked with the bill? Sounds like a dumb question, but I mean, that could give you the answer that you need. He's probably like most of these people do not deal in expert communications with people. And so when you're talking to them, like our communication skills are practiced, honed and sharpened on a daily basis. So even if we say something that's going to be not like you might say, Hey, like Julian, I know that's a, like that word track is not what I like. I, I should have known the word track or I should have done better. I should have said that. I know that you know that they don't know that. Right. Yeah. So if, if I go to like Chick-fil-A and order, right? If I didn't, hadn't been to every other Chick-fil-A that said, yes, ma'am, no, sir. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Th please. And thank you. My pleasure. And that wasn't the normal. I wouldn't even notice the difference. 